One of my favorite uh, quotes from Picasso is, it took him a lifetime to learn how to paint like a child. And to me, that's just, I, I think that there's a lot of things that are childlike in my artwork that I just adore and I think that's what draws people in. I come from a family of artists. My grandfather's a great artist, my mother's an artist, my uncle is also an artist. I was born with asthma. So my mother got me these great uh, crayons and colored pencils and everything she could as long as she kept me on the couch and not exerting my lungs. The career chose me. I just knew that I could draw these, these characters and, and it came just natural to me. I was the guy in high school that when they wanted a banner done or if they wanted a mural on the wall, um, they just came and they're like, can you please do it? And I was so anti-establishment. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to um, sort of manipulate the way I was thinking and the way I was creating art. I came up with my own sort of uh, recipe or the way I put things together, ingredients that make a Napoleonic painting. The simple placement of a heart hanging off a branch on a tree that has no leaves, that was one of the very first pieces I drew and put out there. There was no color, it was just black and white, um, and that was it. My first art show, that was uh, my first experience of uh, just having it out there and people looking at it and hearing their feedback on how the artwork made them feel. It hit me really hard. I was like, this is unbelievable. You know, people are sharing these stories with me in a gallery where there's people around and they're tearing up. And I noticed that people were just expressing their sorrow and their loss for a family member, or even they had children that had issues, and it made me feel more comfortable in explaining my situation to them and why I create the artwork that I do. People ask me questions, why are the trees in this position? Why are they crooked? Why, are, why is the heart all by itself? I was just open, and I just basically expressed what I had just gone through. I never gave much detail. I just wanted the art to sell on its own, not the story behind it. So I never shared that story with anybody. In, uh, in 2004, while my wife was 20 weeks pregnant, um, we had an ultrasound done, and my wife at the time was busy looking at the monitor, you know, and seeing, you could still, you could see the heart moving and, and, and the little legs and everything that's happening. But um, I wasn't looking at the monitor, I was looking at the technician's face. And I could tell by looking at her face and the way she kept that little probe in the same spot, that there was something there that just wasn't right to her. Everybody knows the word cardio. So as soon as the, the doctor said cardiologist, you know automatically that there, there's something wrong with your baby's heart. She must have weighed me 20 pounds, maybe, you know, and tiny baby, and there's tubes and stitches and, and things like that, and that stuff just doesn't leave your mind. Why does a child this young have to start out life this rough? That just changed me as an individual. It just, uh, I don't know, just maybe appreciate life and just start looking at things in a different perspective and, and try to be more optimistic and uh, just have a lot of hope. My stint at the hospital with her, my wife, and the people that I met there, including the nurses, doctors, and everybody, they were just huge sources. Those people, um, I, would, I would draw them. I started to just, uh, just doodle and create little characters and incorporate the heart into them and either holding or caressing or the heart in the wagon because the, the, the grandmother whose grandchild had no, uh, was born with no liver, he was in this little red radio flyer wagon and behind her was another wagon with all the things that he needed to make him function. All of my characters, I try to use them as a way to, um, as an accent in the piece to sort of capture what I'm, I'm trying to portray. If it's something about courage or love or uh, not forgetting, what someone has done for you and how they affected you. My main character, Marcin Evo, he was basically put together from all the other little characters that I had started. Um, the button eye, the shape of his face, the body, the arms, the fact that he has no thumbs and he's got mitten hands. And I want him to look more uh, like a rag doll, something that was loved and just loved so much the hair fell off, the clothes is missing. You know, um, at one point somebody had to put his stuffing back together. The way sort of you feel as a person, you know, sometimes you're tattered and you're ragged and you run down, but you, you know, you, you, you keep going on. He, at the time, I used him to represent myself and how I felt 
through that process of dealing with my daughter. He sort of was the, um, the avenue that I chose to express my frustration with everything that was happening and um, basically just get out how I was feeling. The heart is always, always, always in every single piece of uh, artwork that I create. I will never forget what it means to me where my, my career has gone because of my daughter, but I want people to understand and, and not forget that she played a huge part in where I am today. When I look at something, I like to fall in love with it. I like for that painting to make my guts feel funny. I like for that painting to remind me of something or someone, whether it be good or bad. I want that emotional attachment to that thing hanging on my wall. So every day when I walk by it, it gives me that feeling. It makes me think, oh, I'm so glad I bought that piece of artwork. And I love the way it makes me feel. It reminds me of this person. And for me, I hear that from the people that stand in line and talk to me. There isn't a single person that I have met over the past two and a half, almost three years, that does not share something with me on why they purchased that piece. And that's, that's the part to me about everything that's happened so far that I completely adore. I enjoy taking the time to sit and just talk to everybody. I'm not a person that just enjoys signing a signature, doing a simple doodle, and be on your way. I can't do that. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy talking. I enjoy sharing stories. Outside of the traveling and going to great places and meeting awesome people and gallery owners, to me, the, the, the stories and sh that sharing, building that bond with the people that collect my art is the most meaningful thing to me. I enjoy what I do. Even when I, um, well, even during my downtime, I'm still doodling. I still doodle. I still create new characters. That's something for me that I enjoy. I enjoy creating all the time. My saying is that you, you should buy art because you have an emotional attachment. There's something you can relate to it. Don't buy a piece of art because you want it to match your living room. There needs to be something there that drew you in. You want to walk by it every single day and you want to look at it and it reminds you of something. It, it pulls at your heartstrings. There needs to be an emotional value to that piece that never diminishes. You don't want to change your living room and then change your artwork too. The artwork should always stay there because it means something to you. I'm Fabio Napoleone. And I'm an artist. <laughs>